Welcome and thank you for coming today. This is the tips for applying for jobs online. My name is Kara Appleton and I am a program coordinator with the International Students and Scholars Center and really excited to have you all here. Um, please feel free to use the chat function and let me know if you have questions. You can also unmute yourselves, but it's best to stay muted if um, the presentation is going on um, and we'll have opportunities for questions, stuff like that. So um, let me know what your thoughts are. If you even have an idea or something you want to include, this is an open workshop. So we really want this to be as beneficial to you as possible. So let's get started. So steps to applying to an online job, common mistakes, preparing for video interviewing, and questions. Um, that will be what we'll be covering today. Experience. So I have hired individuals from those who've applied online to a job. And I've also been the recipient of a job that I've applied to online. Actually, all my jobs that I've applied to in the last six years have been online. I have been in the field of international higher education since 2012 and every job I've gotten through an online application process. I do get an interview from one of three jobs I apply to, so I have a pretty good track record. I feel like I know what I'm talking about. I happen to be one of those strange individuals who loves uh, applying to jobs and getting them. I have had three jobs in the last uh, nine years. So it's pretty good to stay at a job for one, uh, for three to five to 10 years. So I want to make sure that you don't think, you know, hopping around is not, that's not necessarily good for um, your, your resume if you hop around. So heads up on that. Um, Let's get started. Scams. You should never have to pay to apply to a job, ever. I don't care what the page says or what the individual on the phone says or what the text says. You, it is legal to apply, to, to pay to apply to a job. If you're asked to give a credit card information or pay with a gift card at the initiation of your filling out the application, that is also a scam. That's called paying for it. They do not need your credit card information. They should not require it or ask for it. So avoid those scams. I know a lot of people are looking at OPT, CPT, all these opportunities to get internships, paid internships, to get jobs. They are not allowed to ask you for money to apply. All right, got that covered. Um, online job description. I'm gonna give you the tips that have really um, helped me because I am not a patient person. I wanna get things done, I wanna get my application in, I wanna make sure I get that job. I'm so excited about the job, I'm super pumped. But patience, breathing, slowing down is key to success in applying for an online job. So there are a couple steps to slow down, make sure you know what you're doing. And the first is to resist the temptation to start that profile with that company and immediately upload a generic cover letter and resume. Let me say that it has never worked for me to use a generic cover letter or resume. Maybe if I had like Steve Jobs resume or like something like that, what has really sold me, because you're this is a very consumeristic um, capitalist society, what has sold me has been the steps that I've taken and I'm showing you here. They want a person who they know will not only meet all the minimum qualifications, but will exceed those and add benefit to their company or organization. So how do they know that you can do all those things if you don't pinpoint each of the qualities they desire in your individualized, AKA, where you broke it down by what qualities you possess that match the words and the qualities they desire. So let's talk about the first step. Print the job description and save the job description. I have a neat little folder. It's a manila folder 
that I use when I'm job hunting that I get ready and I print the job description for each job. At the top of the paper, I'll write the date the job closes so I know I have to submit that resume and cover letter by that date so that I meet the deadline. And then it also gives me an idea of how long to pace myself to write the cover letter and resume. So once you've printed the job description, you highlight and underline verbs and skills on that job description. What that means is the job description is what the employer wants. It, you, they use their own language. So what you do is you mirror that language to them, but with you as being the individual they're looking for, the ideal candidate. And so you need to use their words. And how do you use their words? Pull them right from that job description. There is no shame. Use the verbs they use, use the nouns they use to describe the qualities they want, and you have those qualities. All right, so what you do is you highlight and underline verbs and skills and then what I do is once I've highlighted them, I make a nice little list of them and I put them down the side of the paper. And then next to that, I write a little divot and the qualities that I have. Maybe they're looking for someone who's a team player. Then I think about what jobs I've had and how I've been a team player. And I write team player, CEA, created a student program XYZ. So go through every one of those verbs or every one of those job qualifications and list what you've met in that area and spin it towards you using their words. So um, this takes time. And that's why I'm saying resist that temptation to do the instant gratification of being like, I applied for a job. I did it. It's done. Click. I'm done with today. Close the laptop. No. This is going to be a one to two day, even a week long process, but that's okay because you really want this job. That's okay. If you put the amount of effort that's worth it, you'll see payback. I'm not saying every job you apply to, you'll get an interview. I'm saying you will get an interview eventually if you follow these tactics. Next, prepare a cover letter and resume. They are separate, obviously. Um, U.S., they're usually a paragraph cover letter with an introduction, body of the paragraph, so like three body paragraphs or two body paragraphs, and a conclusion. And um, use the same words they use in the job description. Use the nouns. Use the verbs. And I'm telling you this because they scan, uh, you probably all already know this, but they scan their words, their lingo. They might get a hundred, hundred applicants for this job. What will make you stand out in the scan is if you use the qualities and descriptions that they have. So back to my experience, when I applied for this job I'm in right now, you might think program coordinator at Arizona State University. I don't know what you think about that. Some people might think, wow, that's you know a really prestigious job, or some people might think, no, that isn't what I wanna do, but that's okay. What I'm telling you is, fairly certain the job I'm in right now and have been in for almost a year, for a year and a year and a few months, um, had over 200 people apply to it. And how did I get to be one out of 200? Uh, by following these rules. So I made myself stand out. I used the same words they used in the job description and I personalized the cover letter and the resume. So for every bullet point in my resume under each job that I've had, under those four jobs that I've had since this job, before this job, I use the same action verb that they use in the job description for each bullet point. Maybe they said this position will have student advising on university initiatives. My bullet, first bullet point in my resume for this job was advise students on a daily basis on university programs and uh, application materials, et cetera. And then um, I did that down the line using the way they described the job saying, I've done this. This is what I did in this last job. So you might not have the exact same experience, 
but you might have had in your old job or in your classroom work or in your research experiences that are similar that give you that edge. Cover letters should have a strong introduction with a statement of what we will bring to the company. As an employer, I have read many cover letters and resumes for student workers and also for other people applying for jobs in the International Students Scholar Center. I read through the cover letter and sometimes I just shake my head. The biggest fallacy is the person saying, I'm awesome, look at all the great things I've done. And as ISSC, I'm like, that's great, but how will that help you get this job? How will you be helpful to my organization? I wanna know, do you have this skill? Do you have that skill? I didn't learn any of that. All I learned is that you think pretty awesome of yourself, which is good. This is good. You need to have a good uh, sense of who you are and be confident and proud. But you also need to tell me why you would be the best fit. So in an introduction, you give, I saw this, in, I saw this position posted on the, such and such a website and I was very excited to, be, to have the opportunity to apply. I heard that your organization is seeking enthusiastic and innovative individuals for the position. I feel, and that was the second sentence. So the first sentence is how you learned about the position. Second sentence is what you know about the company. So do a little research, look at their website and get, get them excited about what you're excited about for them. And then third sentence brings it all around to the final, like the thesis statement of why you're awesome for this job. I feel that my experience in student organizational contact, in um, my experience in uh, student programming, and my skill set in communication are the exact needs and skill set for this position. So I'm giving you about myself. I don't know you. I don't, <laughs> I mean, I don't know what your skill set is, but I'm sure you have them. How did I come to those three, a skill set and two experience statements? I reviewed the job description. The job description asks for someone with experience in student advising, experience in student programming, and a skill set in strong communication. I stole it right, steal it. I used it right from the job description. So using and mirroring their words are how you're gonna get an in. They're gonna see you in that position because they already want someone who has experience in data informatics. And then, this is the glory point, you get into those paragraphs, those two paragraphs in your cover letter, that's where you give examples of successful examples of how you have demonstrated the experiences they're looking for. And that is how you bring company benefit. Um, give your first draft of your cover letter and, or, and, your co and your resume to a trusted friend in the field or someone a peer maybe who's in the same program as you and also give it to um, the Career and Professional Services here at ASU. They have a Dropbox where you can submit cover letters and resumes and they will review them and send them back to you. You just drop that electronic box, they review them and they get them back to you. You do need yourself enough time for them to review them. That's why I write down the date on the job description of when it's due so that I give myself enough time to have multiple drafts multiple drafts of the cover letter. I love results. I love to get that cover letter done and be like, it's done, I'm done with it, I'm gonna submit it. But then it's not good. Maybe it has spelling errors. Maybe it has the wrong name on it because I copied one letter that I used and wanted to use the same material, but I forgot to change the name and I forgot to change a little piece of the nuance. Make sure you give that a final proofread by another set of eyes because that will help you. Just saying, just working from experience, I'm pretty sure I did not get the jobs I wanted because I had misspelled the person's name. This is terrible. Okay, and 
and I believe that's what I've covered. Let's continue. Um, use the same words they use. Cover letters should have a strong introduction. Blah, blah, blah. All right. Submitting a gen oh, so these are the common mistakes, as I was saying, that people make in the job application. I'm saying people, I'm saying moi. I have made these mistakes and it's cost me. But I've also seen these mistakes when people are applying to jobs at ISSC and at other jobs I've had when I've been on the hiring committee. So submitting a generic cover letter and resume. <laughs> Don't do it. Um, not proofreading before I'm submitting. I've told you my fallacies and I accept who I am. It's okay. I can't spell sometimes, but my mom reads my cover letters and she works in a law office and she has amazing English skills, but you also have the um, career and uh, professional development services at ASU to review them. So that's great. Their website walks you through the whole process. Um, using too much I language, make the letter about the company and how you will add value. You can use I language if you're like, I see that my experience in um, working in data has provided me with the skill set to make sure all the requirements are met and that your um, your see I'm not I'm not gonna have to talk out of my own uh, my own world my world is higher ed but your world may not be higher ed but what I'm saying is know the lingo the industry know what the company wants they want someone who will deliver on their customer service or deliver and so your customers will be satisfied with the level of work and I'll add value to an already highly esteemed team so it's okay to use I will it is something that you're bringing to the company. Um, not ca contacting your references prior to submitting their contact information to the employer. I have done this a couple times and all of a sudden my reference gets a call and they're like, what the heck? What's going on? I don't even know you applied to this job. So be in contact with whom you need for references before you submit that job. I um, have professional references that are people from my previous job or a professor or previous supervisor and I am not like buddy buddy we don't like hang out on the weekends um, but Becky does get Becky's a former supervisor of mine she works for Georgia Tech she does get a Christmas card from me every year and every two to three months I send her a text and I say hey Becky how's it over in Georgia um, if there's something going on like a snowstorm surviving that snowstorm it's called and being in contact with people who write references for you. Um, they're awesome and I love Becky and I'm really glad she's in my life. And I respect her and I um, want to continue that project. So um, in the past when I've been applying to jobs, I'll, be, I'll just drop her an email and be, be like, hey, I'm looking at a job at this location. Would you still be willing to be a reference for me? And then she'll usually email back and be like, sure, Kara, what are you up to? Send me the cover letter you wrote and the job description. So that's why I always save the job description because you might have to send it to one of these um, references you have. And I also save the job description because um, forgetting to save the printed job description and you might get an interview. So say you've applied to three jobs a week for the past 10 weeks or something like insane like that. That's a lot. But say you have. Um, you don't remember which job was which location, with which manager, with which skill set, and which words. That's why keeping the job description and what skill set, and also the cover letter and resume, print those out, and I staple them or pin them together so that I have them in my file that if I do get an interview, I can pull out that file folder, I can pull out that job description and be like, yes, I know exactly what I'm talking about. Of course, I'm keeping track of all these things. But they don't know that. You do have your information as a resource. So saving those until you get an interview. Also, the reason you put when that job closes on there is so that you know when it will go under review. Usually companies take three business days to two weeks to call for the first job interview, for the first set round of interviews. I may know that it could take a week from the time I 
I submit, well, not even from the time, from the time that job closes until I'll get a call. It could take two weeks, it could take a month. So I wanna hold on to that job description until I'm absolutely sure I did not get this job and I didn't even get an interview. And usually it takes three weeks after that for them to say, oh yeah, we hired somebody. So from the point of which the job is closed on their website to the point of which the job is filled can be two to three months. But the window of time in which you'll get an interview is usually within one to three weeks of the job closing. So you can kind of balance, but save those job descriptions with your notes because you'll be in that interview and they'll be like, so you said in your resume and you're like, oh, which resume did I use for this one? Oh, papers. And you're like, no, I saved it. Let me look what I said in my resume. Oh yes, yes, I did say that. I did give a percentage in that. Mm -hmm. I was 32% above expectation in my sales that month. So good things. That was me dropping the bomb, which is kind of a sad bomb anyway. Let's move on. Okay, we're moving on to the interview. Your resume and cover letter were awesome. And you know why? Because you followed my advice. I know. And that got you an interview. You'll usually get either a call on your mobile and they'll leave you a message. So if you don't have your voicemail set up, make sure it's set up with a professional voicemail that says, you've reached Kara, leave me a message and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. My name's Kara. I was talking about myself in third person. Don't play your favorite rap song. <laughs> don't do some joke where you're with your friend or like, prank calling somebody. If you're applying to jobs, you need the entire presentation of who you are. I made a heart, I don't know, <laughs> to be uh, professional. So check your voicemail message and see what you sound like. And if you've been applying to jobs, check your voicemail. Check your voicemail. Um, Cause I know you'll be anticipating that call for the interview. Some organizations and companies email you and say, we would like to set up a phone interview with you. And that is awesome. Or we would like to set up an in-person interview. Great, but not all of them email. Also on your cover letter and resume, make sure your current phone number and your current email address are what you use. Make sure it's not an old number or disconnected. Make sure the number is perfect because that is the only way that they have to contact you. Or if they have an online system in a portal, make sure you put in the correct number. Um, so practice, practice, practice answering interview questions with a friend. If you go to YouTube, you can Google top interview questions, best responses. You can even in, um, practice with people in the career and professional services um, department. You can call them up set up an appointment with one of their advisors and um, have a list of questions ready for them to ask you and you can practice them. Or you can practice them with a friend, colleague, family member, your dog, um, just practice. Practice talking um, and being comfortable with your own stories. So a lot of um, companies are using STAR method and that's S-T-A-R situation uh, oh shoot, now I've forgotten it. It's telling a story, action and resolution. I forgot what T stands for. Situation, uh, someone can help me out in chat. I'm so sorry. But the STAR method is where you tell a story of how you were awesome in your job. You start out with that situation, explain that situation. Then you talk about the um, action you had to take in order to make that situation better and then the resolution and then I was at 32%, this is my percentage of you know, sales above my recommended goal. And I felt really good about that. And I really helped the company gain that extra mileage that semester, et cetera. Um, in order to make sure your technologies work, have a friend call you on video call, make sure there aren't any distractions. I have a bookcase behind me, but maybe your roommate might come home and stick their head in the door and then stick their tongue out at you. Yeah, that just happened to me. Oh, I have a chat. Let me look at this here. Task, thank you, Aisha. You're awesome. Okay, situation, task, action, and resolution. 
So YouTube is absolutely stock full of these videos on how to tell this story in your interview. Remove distractions, review. And so this is right before the interview starts, maybe 30 uh, minutes. You review the job description. So you're like, I know what this job is about. Have a job description and resume next to you and breathe. Those are the steps. So that is the um, applying for online jobs. Um, does anyone have questions? You can put them in the chat or you can ask a question by unmuting yourself. I am here. I've um, applied to literally hundreds, hundreds of jobs since I've been a profession. Professional. <laughs> I can't even say it right. Okay, so um, someone asked, how do I uh, address the interviewer? Mr. plus last name, question mark. The best way to address the interviewer is how they um, uh, introduce themselves or how they signed the email. If their assistant signed the email and said, Mr. McIntosh will meet with you, call them Mr. McIntosh until they correct you. But when you first are sitting in the um, interview or in the lobby of the waiting to interview, or maybe you are at home and the, the Skype comes up and they say, oh, hello, hello, Kara, how are you doing? I'm like, I'm great. They'll go around and introduce themselves. So you call them how they introduce themselves. They might say, I'm, I'm Mr. McIntosh, but you can call me Greg. Or you can start out, it's always good to start out more formal until you're corrected and it, so bring it formal down. Okay, next question. If you've never been in a situation, can you say what you would do? Yes, definitely. Rule of thumb, don't ever make up uh, stuff about yourself. Be truthful. However, you can, um, you can say, if I was in that situation, that just gives you a conditional. It doesn't mean you're making it up. You're saying, this is how my behavior would be. But you can try to find something in your past, in your history of working or of being a researcher or being in a group setting as a student when you had to work on a group project. Think about those instances and try to say, well, I was in a group with a very difficult individual who wanted to take over the entire project during my undergraduate studies. And I found that the best thing I could do was X, Y, Z. Or I was in a work situation as a student, and this is what I did in that situation. I believe it's applicable because it pulls in the idea of the importance of communicating needs and wants. This individual wanted to leave early, but we couldn't have them leave early because we needed two on staff in order to meet the requirements of the job. So I had to have that discussion with them and tell them they were breaking protocol if they left early. It wasn't fun, but it had to be done. So stuff like that. Um, if you did not receive any response from a company after applying, can I call that company? Okay, that is dependent on who you are and it's kind of tricky. If in the job description they say, please do not call or please um, wait for, like they, in a lot of job descriptions, they say, we will contact you. So if you do not hear from a job and you've applied to it, and it is at least two weeks after the deadline, I would say send an email to the organization and say, I'm just circling back around. I applied to this position. I wanted to know an update. Has this position been filled or what it, where you are at in the process? Um, just being very casual, but not casual, but not like, is this job mine? Will I get an interview? That rubs the company wrong. Send an email to the hiring manager or to whomever the contact is. If it's a company contact saying, like at ISSC, it's ISSC at ASU.edu, say, hello, I applied to this job. I see that the job has been closed for two to three weeks. I would like to know what the status has this job or this position been filled. Calling can be a little tricky because they'll just pass you around and in the end, someone will just say, uh, we don't know yet or that person isn't here. 
usually rule of thumb companies don't like receiving a phone call here in the United States. If I fail a second round interview, should I apply for another position? Okay. Oh, let me answer that in a second. Back to the call thing. If you got an interview and you did not ask in the interview, when do you plan to get back to the candidates for the position about a second interview or when do you plan to make a decision on this position? That would happen during the interview at the end. And they told you, oh, we plan to make a decision for a second interview in the next week. Um, it is okay to email or call that individual who said that and ask, where are you at in the decision process? Um, that is, if you had an interview, it would be more acceptable to call, leave a message, hi, this is Kara, I interviewed for such and such a position last week or two weeks ago. Just wanted to call, follow up on where you're at in that decision process. Don't look desperate, um, be positive, but calm and confident. Because looking desperate, like, I really want to know what's going on, that, that, that doesn't reflect well on, on you. So just saying. Okay. If I fail the second round interview for another position, go, yes, do. If you like the organization, you felt like everything was going well, but maybe they went with the other candidate. Let me tell you about how many times that's happened to me. I, in my professional life, have opened to work at ASU four times. The fourth time is the charm, which is not the common case, but I got in this last time. So when I did my undergrad, I applied at ASU. It was in 2006. And then I applied again when I was looking at going to graduate school, but wasn't really sure if I wanted to go to graduate school or go um, work at ASU. That was two years later. And then when I graduated, from graduate school, I applied to ASU again, and that was in 2012. And then I applied to ASU in 2019. Yeah, and I got it. So there's no shame in applying more than once. It just shows perseverance. Now, if you made a complete fool of yourself the first time you applied and in the interview, I don't recommend it. But if you were a strong candidate and strong enough to make it to the second round of interviews, it means they liked you and they were strongly considering you. So continue to apply in that department, at that um, organization, it means you have a foot in. If I apply for several positions of one single company and receive several higher um, with, same, with the same question, should I give the same answer to those questions? Yes, um, you can give a variation of the same answer. That's fine. Uh, make sure it's polished and strong. Don't give an answer that might be a little wimpy or not like, make you look really good and powerful and able to do the job and competent. So I write out questions. I, I'm very tactile, I write, but I either write or type out common interview questions. Tell me about a time when you had to make a difficult decision. Tell me about a time when you had to make a difficult decision. And then I do bullet points where I put scenarios I've had to make difficult decisions. And I'm like, oh yeah, that one time, that I had to decide whether to tell a student to go home or to stay. Oh yeah, that was hard. And then another one. And then I try to pick from those different difficult decisions. That's the one I'll use that. And then I practice saying it. Well, sure, I'll tell you about a time. And then I do the star, situation, task, action, and resolution for each one of them. Break it down. It takes time, but it's worth it. Um, is it good to apply to the same position in the same company for different locations? Can um, I add something to this, Kara? Hey, how you doing, Mahmoud? How are you? <laughs> yes. Uh, to answer uh, Neil's question about the, I think most of those questions are screening questions when you apply for a job, and the companies use your response to make sure you are a good fit for the for that role or not. So, for example, Amazon. If you apply for Amazon, they'll ask you to give some assessment. So make sure the answers which you are giving is aligned to the rules you are applying. Exactly. They want to uh, match that, that the, you are applying for a software engineer role and the answers which you are giving, that should match to that particular role. Otherwise, they'll think that you are just randomly applying to any other job. So make it pretty much uh, uh, consistent with the job uh, description and the role you are applying. And totally. 
I think you you talk about uh, emailing uh, them after the interview. This is very important. They teach us in the business school that you should, once you get an interview, you should email them within 24 hours, thanking them. If you don't have anyone, like most probably you would be having your uh, email from the HR who has uh, set up the interview. So it's always best to email them. But if you can get uh, your manager or whoever is the interviewer's their email address, and there is no harm in asking for their email address, you can just say that, can I get your email address so that I can send a thank you note to you? And they'll very willingly, they'll give you the email address. And it's very important to send a thank you note immediately after your interview or within 24 hours. Uh, and maybe you can just talk about something which you had in the interviews few conversation one or two line so that they know that you're really interested in this role and then like they at the same time they're interviewing 10 other candidates so they'll remember you okay this was the guy we had this kind of conversation so it will be a little bit they'll get a personal touch with you that's great yeah, yeah and i to be um, specific mahmoud's exactly right if you got an interview you need to email whomever you have a contact for with a thank you for that interview. Um, what I was talking about, and I guess I wasn't very specific and I apologize for that. If you haven't gotten an interview and you're waiting for that call or email for an interview, I was talking about whether you should wait to call or email them. But if you have the interview, you need to email or call that, that not call, you need to email that thank you, that thank you message within 24 hours, totally true. That's that's perfect. So next week I'll be talking about video interviewing in more depth and how to be articulate and also how to present yourself in a way that is the most successful and I've seen as the most, um, uh, how do I put this, how like distractions to get rid of and, and things to add to emphasize who you are so you come out the best you can be over the digital setting. So we had um, that one question. Um, is it good to apply to the same position in the same company for different locations? I don't see why that would be a problem. Yeah, different locations is totally great. And um, if you got an interview at one location, you're more likely to get an interview at a different location. So um, they have different hiring people, most likely at the different location or a different panel to review who you are. So you'll be in front of fresh faces and can really shine in a different way. And it's, it's good practice. So um, if the position has no pay internship and I'm an F1 student, do I still need to get a CPT for it? Um, all work and internships require that you get CPT OPT approval. I am not a um, international student advisor. I'm actually a programs coordinator. So please email your questions about CPT OPT to ISSC at ASU.edu and they'll give you the right track of things for your immigration questions. Um, I do know that anything except volunteer work, and they're also very particular about what type of volunteer work, um, anything outside of volunteer work requires uh, CPT, OPT, even if it's unpaid. So you want to be careful. Regulations are very strict. And so please um, contact ISSC at ASU.edu and ask them that question. And they'll get, they're very responsive to emails these days, one to two business days. Okay. Um, ASU included in, in internships and things like that. Anything paid or unpaid, if it's called an internship and it's not called volunteering, um, you have to get CPT or PT. So check that out with the International Student Scholar um, Advising um, team. I um, wish I had all the answers, but I don't want to give you misinformation. So please do the research. Which is preferred by the company through linked, um, LinkedIn or official website? Um, I always apply to positions through the actual company page because I know that LinkedIn will track me, but um, LinkedIn is totally acceptable to apply through. Just expect to get some spam from them and lots of recommendations for jobs you probably won't want to apply to. 
So what I do is if I see a job on LinkedIn that is of interest to me, I go to the company's website and apply through them. But LinkedIn's a great tool. Um, another thing for applying to jobs online, clean up your digital profile, your Facebook, your Instagram, your Twitter, make sure it's, it's clean. Delete anything that would be considered controversial, um, use of substances, alluding to use of substances, alluding to anything that would be controversial. And I'll let you decide where to draw that line. Um, but I, I don't have a social media presence other than Instagram and it's locked down. You have to know me in order to get in. So um, think about how you appear to the outside world and before you apply to any job, clean up that digital presence. Okay, so um, many people find that their own brain, their own feelings keep them back from doing what they want to do and being who they want to be and applying to jobs. Um, I do know that there are jobs where I am not qualified for. And so I do my best to apply to jobs where I know I would be successful in those jobs. If you may not have all the desired qualifications of a job, but you know you would do the job really well, that's where your confidence is. If you feel you have the skill set, but you may not have the experience in doing a job, I encourage you to apply. If you want me to review a resume for you, you can email it to me, but I also need the job description and get ready for some tough love because I will X out anything that is extracurricular. I will try to focus on what you can do, but the best resource is career and pressure, um, career and pressure. Uh, I've been talking too much. Career and professional development services at ASU. They're happy to review those resumes and cover letters. Go to their website. You'll get directed to their Dropbox. It is their handshake website is phenomenal. And if you're in the business school, they have all that set up for the business students. So Mahmoud, it looks like somebody tagged you, but I don't know if it went through, if you wanna look in the chat. And if um, you struggle with confidence and being, um, you have a fear that um, you're not good enough for a job, I just really encourage you to take your time. If you don't get that job, it means it wasn't the good job for you, it wasn't the right job for you. Nothing to say on you, it just means it wasn't a good fit and another opportunity will come along. So my, <laughs> I don't know if this is great advice, but um, applying to jobs is like dating or trying to find romance. It's all a numbers game. What you need to do is keep trying, keep asking, keep applying, and something eventually work out. But if you never try, if you never put yourself out there, you'll never fall in love. I mean, you'll never get the job you want. So um, take that advice for whatever it's worth. Um, keep asking questions out there, but you can, um, uh, you can email me if you have specific questions, but I might direct you back to the Career and Professional Development Services. But I'm putting my email in the chat if you all want to. Um, and I hopefully uh, can be of some assistance to you. I really love interviewing in this job stuff. So um, thank you for coming today. And I wish you the best of the luck out there. Stay safe, stay healthy, and take care of yourselves.